Here's how to use your Taylor calculator. There are four sections to the calculator. In the first section is the date, the day's open, high, low, and closing prices. In the second section, the numbers comprise the sell envelope, the resistance number, or the breakout. The third section is the numbers representing the buy envelope, support number, or breakout. And the fourth section is the range that is calculated. So let's go through this and you'll see how easy this is. Now in this example, I'm going to use the numbers from the E-mini futures market. Now remember, you can use this calculator to track any market. You can use it for E-mini futures, you can use it for NASDAQ futures, you can use it for a stock, you can use it for crypto, you can use it for virtually anything. So you can create multiple files using the calculator. When you first open the calculator, it will appear as a blank Excel spreadsheet. Follow the instructions in the top left cell, in green. You'll see a date highlighted in red. And follow the instructions to begin in cell A4, enter the date shown above, and press enter. So I'm going to enter the date as I see it above, 7-16-23, and I'm going to press enter. Then select that cell, use the fill handles in cell A4 in that same cell, use the fill handle to drag down to cell A11, and from the fill options box, make sure you select fill weekdays. Remember, we only want to track the market on days that markets actually trade, not during weekends and not during holidays. Next, in the rows with the green highlighted dates, enter the open, high, low, and closing data in columns C through F for the market that you want to use this particular file for. So I'm going to enter the data for the E-mini futures market on rows having green highlighted dates. As you enter each succeeding row of data, the Taylor formulas Use that information to calculate the Taylor numbers for the succeeding days. Since Taylor is an average of averages with multiple calculations performed, we have to have at least five rows of data filled in for the calculations to provide accurate information. Notice that the calculations are filled in automatically as you enter each recurring open, high, low, and close row of data. Now that I've entered the open, high, low, close data, the Taylor calculated numbers will appear in the yellow highlighted boxes in the two columns to the right. You're going to want to save the file with a familiar file name. In this case, since I've used it to track the ES futures market, I'm going to name the file ES and I'm going to choose Save As from the file menu. So in this case, the file will be saved as ESXLSX. By saving the file with a different name, you'll still have the blank Taylor calculator file to use for any other market. Anytime you want to use the calculator to track a different market, you open up the original blank Taylor calculator and it will open up a blank file and you'll enter the numbers just as you've seen in this video. Here's a screenshot of my calculator following the market close of March 29th, 2023. The latest numbers show the likely trading range for the following day. The four gray columns on top are construction lines and they aid in making up the final resistance number and the final support number. So what we're going to really take note of is the resistance number in yellow, 4076, the support number, 4046, and the range for the day, 30 points, okay? We're also going to make note of the closing price. Next, we take those numbers and fill in our chart. Here's my trading view chart for Thursday, March 30th. And the numbers were 4076 and 4036. So between the hours of 930 and 1600, I'm going to fill in a rectangle, a parallel channel, 4076, I'm going to find that at 9.30, 4 p.m., and I'm going to drag down to 40.46. Okay, so here is my Taylor trading zone for the day. 
4076, 4046. Now I also want to mark the previous day's close on my chart. And that number was 4058. So I go back to my chart and I want to put a horizontal line at 4058. And that's it. Remember, I do this prior to the market being open. Okay, so this is how I suggest you set up your chart using the Taylor calculations. Now, one more thing regarding Taylor. Unlike when Taylor developed his trading zone calculations, today we have market moving news announcements. And what happens then is that prices are skewed higher or lower than they would have been because of the announcement. So what we can do then is to fine tune our calculator according to the intraday high or low. Now the intraday high or low is usually printed within the first half hour to hour of the trading day. Now notice at 10 a.m. prices shot up to 4088. They went down to Taylor's resistance number, bounced back up but never took out the 4088 high. So we could see or we can assume at this point, somewhere around 1030, that 4088 was going to be the high of the day. So what we want to do to fine tune the Taylor trading zone is to take it and transpose it up to 4088 and move it up to where the intraday high existed. So I'm going to move that up there and that better fine tunes, that fine tunes actually, the Taylor trading zone for the daily trading based on market moving news that upsets the average prices, which of course, Taylor is a calculation of average prices of the previous several days price action. So that's how you use the Taylor calculator to calculate the numbers and then transfer those numbers to your chart.